So the pancreas, uh, this is a gland that is functioning as both exocrine and endocrine. Um, so what it does is mostly it's secreting digestive enzymes into the digestive tract. So it's helping um, with digestion and um, the spread throughout the pancreas, there are cells that also act as endocrine. They have an endocrine function. Um, so they're secreting not into a duct, but rather just into the bloodstream. So that's why we're talking about it right here. We're going to focus on that endocrine function. Uh, so the pancreatic islets, that word is pronounced like islets, um, pancreatic islets contain two types of cells and these cells secrete insulin and glucagon. We're going to focus in on insulin for right now. What does insulin do? How does it do what it does? So insulin, when insulin is released, into the bloodstream, it makes its way to target cells. What are the target cells? Well, this could be skeletal muscle, it could be cells in the liver, um, or it could be cells in adipose tissue. Those are the primary targets for insulin. And when insulin finds its target cell, it will bind on the surface of the cell. It binds to this type of a receptor. I'm gonna ask you to think back, see if you can remember what type of receptor this is. This is going to initiate a second messenger system and now that you've had a second to think about it, uh, you can pause the video if you need more time, um, but this is a, a tyrosine kinase receptor. So once this insulin molecule binds, um, the tyrosine kinase activity down here will become activated. That's going to result in a signaling cascade. And uh, this is something we have seen Boy, it feels like so many weeks ago at this point. This is something we've seen before. These are vesicles inside of the cell and they are just kind of holding on to these GLUT4 carrier proteins. Okay, so these vesicles are ready to go and what's going to happen is the second messenger system will cause these vesicles to fuse with the plasma membrane. So fusion will take place, that's going to insert these GLUT4 um, carrier proteins into the plasma membrane and then those will allow facilitated diffusion of glucose into the cell. So now um, the cell is taking up glucose from the blood um, to the intracell uh, inside of the cell and um, then that glucose can be processed, it can be built into glycogen molecules. Um, if this is an ad in adipose tissue, then these would be converted into fat instead. So that's essentially what insulin is doing. Um, problems that can come up if the pancreas is not doing its job correctly or if insulin is not doing its job correctly, um, this is what leads to diabetes. And there are a couple of different types of diabetes. The characteristic thing about diabetes is that the glucose levels in the blood are too high. They're higher than they should be in the blood as well as in the urine. Um, so type one diabetes, this is referring to diabetes due to the destruction of cells in the pancreas. So this means that the pancreas is just not able to produce enough insulin to meet the needs of the body anymore. Um, type one diabetes, this is one that we, at this point, we don't know how to prevent it. This is one that is thought to be more um, genetically based and um, there's some view that it is an autoimmune disease. So perhaps even the immune system of the body itself is attacking the pancreas. Um, so that's type one diabetes. Type two diabetes, this one is far more common. Type two diabetes, this is caused by um, insulin resistance. So maybe insulin is present, but just the tissues, uh, the target cells are not as receptive to it as they should be. So type two diabetes. There's also a type of diabetes that can come up just during pregnancy. This is called gestational diabetes. This happens in only about 4% of pregnancies, um, but it's also based on like not being able to manage the glucose levels correctly in the blood. So during pregnancy, um, not only does the mo mother's body have to have to manage glucose for herself, but also for the baby. And so if the pancreas does not upregulate insulin production during pregnancy, uh, that can lead to, to, uh, to gestational diabetes. Um, this is something that is t temporary in the sense that it just lasts during pregnancy, but it can be serious if not managed correctly. So it's, it's standard to do a um, gestational diabetes test if, when a woman is pregnant. Um, you go and basically drink a sugary drink and then they, they test to see if your body is actually processing glucose the way that it should be. Risk factors for diabetes. Okay, uh, again, we don't know how to prevent type one, but we can sometimes predict prob by based on probabilities, we can um, indicate whether a person is, at, is 
sort of at risk for developing type 1 just based on a family history. Type 2 diabetes, this one is a little bit more controllable in terms of its development. There are things that we can do to prevent its development. And specifically, the things are um, weight. If a person is overweight, they're much more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. So managing weight is important. And then also physical activity. If a person is not physically active, um, again, more likely to develop type 2 diabetes in that case. So how much how much is enough? The recommendations are 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. So that could be three days of 50 minutes, or it could be um, five days a week, 30 minutes a day, going, going for like even just a brisk walk um, is very helpful for pre preventing type 2 diabetes from developing. These other risk factors we don't really have control over, being old and having certain genes, um, those are just kind of unfortunate, we can't, we can't control those. But these other two, um, weight and physical activity, of course we can do something about those.